Hello, we hope you're doing okay. Welcome again to Haley Island. Now, the Nike Zoom Exagama, the latest and greatest trail shoe from Nike, or is it the latest brick? Let's do a good, bad video to see what I think. Well, the good thing is that Nike have finally came out with a trail shoe with Zoom X in it, so that must be great, yes. The bad point is that they're 400 grams compared to 250 in my UK 13 in a, in a Vaporfly Next percent, so they're certainly no magic wand for racing on trails. So they're even heavier than the Zoom Fly 5, which I equated to a brick. I wouldn't quite say these are a brick because my expectations are a bit lower. And good point is that they fit reasonably well. So we've got one, two, three, four, five eyelets plus an opportunity to do a double knot. It's a gusseted tongue and it's sort of mildly padded there. You can actually get a nice lockdown by pulling in these laces quite a lot. I found that out of the box they fitted quite wide, so I've had to pull these in a fair amount, which did give me a bit of sort of discomfort there initially. But it actually expands more in the toe box and um, we've got a nice little room around there. And we've got a crash pad there in case you run into any rocks or anything like that. And a bit of waterproofing there at the front for sort of splash proof. But it's an engineered mesh here at the front, so nice and breathable. Quite comfortable on foot, I must say. So a good point perhaps about the ride is I sort of actually equated them on the road to perhaps even the better Invincible because I just found the Invincible a bit too soft and these are sort of just nicely soft. I think the fact they've got that aggressive outsole for the trail shoe just sort of gives them that nice sort of feeling about them. The bad thing is of course that 400 grams in my size is just a ridiculous amount of weight to go far so it really does feel like quite difficult to get up to speed. But yeah, if it likes cruising along easy miles then it's a nice one. But yeah, how many sort of easy day shoes does one need even on the trail? Trials. So a good point, I thought they were reasonably well priced at £145. That's a lot cheaper obviously than the Alpha Fly 2, which is almost double. And just goes to show that a shoe that has Zoomex in it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be ridiculously expensive. But these are exactly the same price as the Zoom Fly 5 and quite a kind of a similar thing because they've got the Zoomax encased in a carrier foam. I think this is actually pure Zoomax in these ones as opposed to Zoomax scraps of the Nike Zoom Fly 5. But it kind of gives it the same sort of feeling. I'd say that there's just a bit more softness in these. I think in a way I actually prefer the ride in these. It just feels, feels a bit more sort of nicely soft without being too hard. I suppose the bad point really is that I was expecting this shoe to be something different to what it is and that is one of the problems recently with Nike shoes. You expect some amazing shoe and all you really get is effectively a heavy daily trainer to, to run on the trails reasonably slowly. And in fact I actually enjoyed them better when I was going on the road than I did on the trails. When I finally got to the trails the sort of like relatively high stack meant and the heavy weight meant it just sort of just didn't look it's really flow that well and they're so dry at the moment if i show you the the trail i'm on at the moment which is sort of a reasonably indicative of the what sort of one i've been doing and on there you sort of think well i could have just worn a lighter lighter weight road shoe at the moment so i did a bit of running up and down the beach for the <laughs> jumping over gopro pictures and it was not bad for that and I did a bit of sliding in the loose just, just to check how good they were in the grip. Admittedly, it's so dry at the moment, so I can't really give it like a muddy wet test because there isn't any muddy wet test to do. But yeah, if you buy a, a trail shoe in the summer, you don't really expect to be traipsing through mud, do you? So I think in a way, doing a bit of trail and a bit of road is quite a good sort of test. And how often can you just start on a trail? Often you find if you're going from home, you have to do a few miles there. Or if you get on a run, yeah, more often than not, is a bit of road, the bit of trail. You, you want something that actually could work well for both, I find. And in a way, I actually found that I actually preferred this on, on the road, as I said. You know, it just sort of felt like it was nice and cruisy, a bit more stable than the Invincible because of that aggressive outsole and the fact that it's encased in that carrier foam I think it's SR2 again just gives it just that sort of slightly firmer feel so I thought it'd be useful to do a comparison between the Peg Trail 3 Gore-Tex on the left here in black and the Zagamas on the right now it's interesting when you look at the outsoles of the two shoes that at their widest both these are UK 13 they're pretty much the same width but notice how much sort of narrower the, the Peg Trail is here in the sort of in the middle of the shoe and i think this is quite common now with shoes especially with the zoom x they've made it quite wide i think presumed that's for more stability and just a softer foam there's quite a lot of difference between the outsole design here uh, a lot of people complain that the peg trails weren't actually that great on on the wet and they've come up with a different design here but it's actually quite a minimal design there's hardly any sort of studs there in the midsole is there it's interesting if you look closely there at the wear patterns i've only done 20 miles so far in the zagamas and already those 
three studs there at the front and pretty much half worn down I would say so that's not great on the other hand you kind of thinking well if I'm going to use this as much for the road as I am on trails and the fact that these are worn down may actually be better and I won't feel my toes too much on the back of these I thought it was so interesting that these two shoes are actually pretty much identical weight both about 400 grams so clearly neither shoe are really designed for out and out speed they are both designed for sort of plodding along on trails which I think was kind of my sort of disappointment again with the, this Zoom X Sagama because you're kind of thinking that where's the magic in this shoe where what is the point of the zoom x and you just got a shoe that's exactly the same weight as the one with the react now when i did a sort of a walking test with both on you did they definitely notice that the zoom x agama is just slightly softer but not hugely and there's quite a difference in stack i mean there's a stack allegedly in the zagama it's 37 at the rear 33 at the front for a four mil drop Whereas the Peg Trail 3, according to the Nike website, is something like 15 at the front, 24 at the back for a 9.5 drop. So that's quite a difference. And I think I didn't really notice the fact it was a full mil drop, which is when it was good. Because I don't, don't normally like sort of low drop shoes. But in this one, I think because of the stacks quite high, it was sort of better. But um, on the minor side, I did sort of feel my toes a bit through them. But I think it was getting better. Maybe as I was showing there that the uh, studs at the front are starting to wear down already after 20 miles. I'm not feeling them through the midsoles so much, which is a bit odd. But um, you wonder how much they're going to last. I mean, if I'd run another 30 miles and I'm up to 50, well, they've disappeared altogether. Admittedly, that's where I normally have most of my wear in my shoe. But, you know, I think if that's an important part of the feature of the shoe, a stud where you toe off, then, well, it, it's kind of half gone already. Otherwise, if we look at the eyelet design, other than the fact we've got two plastic ones there and there are like three plastic ones here and then a slightly different design, it's very similar. You've got five and you've got this sort of loop at the front here, which is very similar. I'm feeling I have to pull in the laces quite a lot on both. But having done so, then I've got a nice sort of lock down there and I haven't got too much material but I have got more room at the front then, which is quite of handy in a shoe designed for trails where you obviously don't want to have your foot bumping up and down all the time. If you look at the back of the two shoes, it's not exactly the same, but there's a lot of similarities. The gaiter here in both is pretty much the same, obviously a different color. And it's quite a nice sort of feeling that it wraps around the foot quite nicely. Don't get any Achilles problems. The heel tab is just a bit different, but a similar sort of idea really. And got a bit of nice padding there on both in fact if I if we actually look inside the shoe it's pretty much identical sort of idea here with a sort of like a padded ring round on both so you can see that basically they've just taken the same design there I think got a gusseted tongue there on in both ones I'd say one interesting thing, difference between the two shoes is that the Zagama's got a glued down insole whereas the Peg Trail 3 Gore-Tex has got a removable one which is kind of interesting in a way sort of a bit worrying because if the shoe gets wet you kind of feel that you want to take the insole out and then a trail shoe that's very likely to happen so that seems an interesting development but maybe that's to sort of try and save weight by having a glue down insole i'm not sure we're just trying to do a bend test here of the zagama and there's a bit of flex there but you know it's reasonably firm compare that to the peg trail 3 gore-tex and it's pretty similar if we do the same in the invincible there's a lot more flex there and the Invincible, look how squashy that is. If I do the same with the Zagamas, then there's not half as much sort of compression there in the forefoot. Just do that again with the Invincibles. You really see how that's really compressing. And in the Peg Trail 3 Gore-Tex here, it's kind of similar to the Zagama, which is kind of why I'm liking the two shoes has been fairly similar. Just the fact that the Peg Trail is just slightly firmer, but not in a bad way. So a good point in a way, as I said, I thought in a way these are almost a better Invincible than the, than the Invincible for me. I just feel that there's slightly more firmness to the shoe, but still being nice and soft. Not so, certainly a shoe that you're going to be wanting me to take it out on your fastest days for sure, but I'm sure like any shoe, you can get up to speed. At the end of my long run today, I did nine miles and I did a few strides to make it up to 10, and you can certainly get going. But that's the same with any shoe, isn't it? I mean, a lot of people say, oh, the shoe's misunderstood because it's so heavy. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're a good runner, you're going to be able to run well in anything. I mean, even welly boots. I, I did actually buy a pair of welly boots just to prove the point. <laughs> I mean, get, got them out, but maybe that's a future video. So I think the overriding bad point about this shoe is that basically I was just expecting something different again, like the Zoom Fly 5. I mean, you said you've got Zoom X in a shoe, and you instantly sort of equate that to sort of the Alpha Fly and the Vapor Fly or even the Street Fly, some sort of minimus thing you've, you want to go fast in. Whereas these are just basically just another heavy daily trainer type affair from Nike. And you're kind of thinking, well, how many 
shoes do you want like that yeah it might be quite quite nice to take this out for a few ploddy miles on the trails but at the moment well i can take any shoe out on the trails and i can take the endorphin speeds out and they're 280 grams and these are 400 so you're kind of thinking well i've got to be a bit masochistic really to want to take out a shoe that's so heavy and yeah i think when it did come to the points where i was going over rough ground i did sort of notice the weight it did sort of feel that the softness was wasn't really helping i was filled with a trail shoe you want a bit of firmness there because ultimately you get the cushioning from the ground itself that's the whole point of a trail you know you're not running on tarmac you are running on a softer surface especially when you're really running over sand or mud you're going to get so much sort of softness anywhere on the ground the last thing you want is any more sort of sinking from the shoe so but i haven't said that they've done a reasonable job i think in making this as firm as they can in this shoe but you just wonder whether they're using zoomax here just for marketing purposes and is it really a point maybe i would say that i just prefer the ride slightly in this one to the peg trail 3 gore-tex but yeah is it sufficiently different i'm not sure and also i always think with a trail shoe that i'd rather have something that keeps my feet nice and dry because I think in the summer it, you can use anything and would it be any good on the rocks and stuff well I did a little climbing over rocks just to get onto the beach and yeah it was all right I mean I did a bit of sliding in the loose and yeah it was all right but I mean if it's slippery you're going to slide whatever and you always have to be careful I find and especially with a shoe that's so heavy we're well, not really going to be sort of like tearing around the corners at breakneck speed only in a shoe like this I mean I think it's designed I think for easy miles on the trails off some very long races i can't think of who surely would have won a race in this 400 grams of heft in a shoe where you could sort of take out say a street fly or an adios 7 have a reasonable amount of grip and almost half the weight and you think well on a trail the last thing you want is some heavy shoe to climb up a big hill just because you feel like it might be a bit more comfortable well that's that's my view anyway so yeah another sort of mm, okay sort of shoe from nike generate a lot of interest i'm sure and of course i've succumbed into buying it but <laughs> what do you think about this one is it is a trail show in, of interest to you do you think the zoomax is just there as a marketing tool does it actually add any value do you like the look of them i'm also kind of hoping that nike will come out with this peg turbo next nature and it'll be a shoe around about the 300 gram mark that i actually want to sort of put my feet there's not too heavy not too light just sort of that sort of compromise shoe like the speed that nike just don't seem to do at the moment which is kind of bizarre they've even got like ultra minimalist shoes like the dragonfly and, and the streak fly they're sort of top of the range racing shoes and even them are getting a bit heavier aren't they but they just sort of that don't have anything in that middle of the ground that it's sort of fairly light and you want to put in your feet every day which is odd anyway so once again hope you found this interesting like and subscribe and all that and look forward to seeing the next one then bye